Okay. All right, here's another episode of Mendel's Musings. Today is November the 19th, 2023, and I'm Vicki Warnicke with Reverend Dr. Mendel Adams. All right, Dad, uh, what's the topic for today? Well, I, I, I just... Uh, I... Well, you froze a little bit. I tell you what brought my brought this to my attention. You need to repeat that because you kind of froze, so I didn't hear what you said. That's my inner connection. My internet connection is unstable. <laughs> okay. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, my memory was uh, uh, prodded by I have a plaque on my wall that was given me back in uh, twenty. 14, I think it was, like this, by the Masonic Lodge. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, the uh, uh, Prince Hall Lodge, which is the African American Lodge, and the Grand Lodge of, uh, of Ohio, which is the White Lodge. And we worked together to put uh, uh, tombstones on the graves of Civil War veterans that were part of the, quote, colored troops that uh, protected the city of Cincinnati back during the time when the uh, Confederates uh, were uh, laying siege on Cincinnati and they, uh, the black uh, uh, troops went out and built the ballwark and so forth to hold the Confederates at bay. And so we found that there were uh, tombstones that were missing that did not have to never had had tombstones on these uh, graves of these seven people that were buried in the uh, colored grounds. So to make a short story long, uh, uh, Brian and I went to, on a Memorial Day, we went to the graveside because the pastor at the First United Church of Christ could not be there for the memorial service. And he asked me to offer a prayer. So I went to offer a prayer and Brian went with me. And then they had a woman uh, uh, that uh, took us around. Her name was Kathy Dahl, D-A-H-L. And she took us around and showed us the graves of the uh, of, uh, Revolutionary War uh, uh, officers that had served. Uh, she showed us, you know, a, a lot of really nice graves. And then she took us by an area which had no tombstones. I shouldn't say none. There were maybe three or four tombstones there. And they said, she said, this is the colored ground. And then she told us the story about the colored cemetery. And uh, it's a fascinating story, which I can get into. But uh, at, the more I learned about that and read about it, the more I was convinced that uh, something ought to be done for these graves, the unmarked graves. And so we began to do the search and it took us a little over a year to get it all worked out. It involved uh, me uh, uh, having to uh, have uh, Senator Portman's office to uh, uh, contact the uh, Veterans Administration and, and uh, involve me talking to the Veterans Administration by phone. Uh, involved me going to the city council and having them pass a resolution because the city owns the cemetery where this was. Oh. Uh, it uh, involved me uh, uh, really putting a lot of pressure on, uh, and and we did. When and we got it done, uh, we were able to find five of the seven. We were able to find. Uh, get through all the machinations that we had to do. We had to talk to next of kin. And you can imagine this was over a hundred years ago that the next of kin, many of them, had, we didn't, they didn't have a next of kin. Yeah. It, um, so we were able to locate five that uh, we actually were able to get stones for. And, uh, and we dedicated those stones and had a big service. Well, on November the 2nd, uh, in the year 2013, I was wrong on my date. It was 2013, November 2nd. The uh, uh, the Black Lodge put out a big paper called uh, Local Events that was done by Prince Hall, 
with a lot of pictures and so forth that talked about what was done and how we did it. It's a marvelous thing. And uh, I've got it, uh, I put it in an envelope and put it on the back of this uh, plaque that I've got on the wall. Oh, so okay. that when I'm dead and gone, somebody can look at it and say, well, uh, the old geezer did something uh, in the lodge. Uh, so, so that was that did I think, my memory and got it going. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I don't, no, I think that I mean it's fascinating, but uh, and I know we've talked about it before, but how did you find the relatives of these fallen uh, soldiers? That must have been a challenge. Yeah, well, we we had uh, 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 I'm trying to think his name now. Charles Brown, who was the uh, uh, a member of the city council at the time, he now is a, a state senator in uh, Columbus, uh, African American man who was also a member of the Prince Hall Lodge. And uh, uh, when we presented this before the council, uh, he helped us to make the contact with the genealogy department at the city library it said that they had these two genealogists that work with us one of the genealogists that works with the um, um freedom center with the uh, underground railroad museum that they had just built there and uh, so they they put themselves to it what the reason why we had to do let me let me back up a little bit abraham lincoln passed uh, uh, an executive order that said that any veteran that that was on the union side that any veteran would uh should have their graves marked with a stone and so the the veterans administration has a program where they will do that the problem is that uh they, they have to be sure that they get the family involved in it because they were putting stones early on. They were putting stones with crosses on them and they had them on people that weren't, uh, uh, that weren't Christians. And so that caused problems. So they had to make sure that the family agreed to what, what markings should be on the stone. And they would not just put a plain stone up. So, so that was a problem we had to go through. Well, so we did the genealogical search on the people. The the WPA, the Works Progress Administration under FDR, had you know those socialists that were uh, that were trying to take over our country. They were out there and they actually mapped out the grave site and and did stuck things down in the ground to find where they were. So we knew who was buried and where they were buried. I was wondering how you knew that. Oh, fascinating. This was the first integrated uh, uh, cemetery in uh, the state of Ohio was right there. This is the same cemetery that back in the day before, uh, during the time of the fugitive slave law, when the people were escaping from uh, 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 over in Kentucky and crossing over the river, then coming into Cincinnati and then going on up into Canada. This is the same place that uh, uh, there were 23 uh, persons who had been enslaved that escaped and came over and they had a mock funeral and put them in the bottom of, of these wagons uh, with a, a mock funeral and uh, they took them over here to the Westby Cemetery and had a, a funeral for them. And then uh, the Underground Railroad uh, grabbed these folks up and took them on up into Ripley, Ohio, and on up into Canada. Well, uh, when uh, Kathy Daw had told us the story, so I got uh, uh, Levi Coffin's book, uh, uh, Reminiscence, and read the book that had been published in 1908. I remember that, I remember that. And it was shortly after that, that uh, that our family reunion went to uh, Fountain City, Indiana, because that's where Levi Coffin lived. 
in the Underground Railroad before he went to Cincinnati. He became president of the Underground Railroad there. Well, anyhow, so so this is this has a long history of uh, and very well documented. And but there were never any tombstones put there. And so we we had one of the groups that was there in the cemetery when Brian and I went with this uh, um, Memorial Day uh, service there was a group of folk from the, uh, I forget what they called themselves. They were, they were a group that whose job was to honor the Union soldiers that had fought uh, for the Union cause during the Civil War, and they go around the country and uh, have uh, uh, ceremonies and so forth uh, and to remember these people. Well, they were there uh, for the folk that were there, and and so I talked to them about the one. Your internet internet is unstable again. Here that, that were from the from the black, uh, so I laid the guilt trip on the people at the VA, and I talked to uh, uh, Portman's office, and he gave me a, a young woman that was on his staff. She worked like a trooper to help us on this, and uh, 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 he he didn't make any contact with us, but she did, and so she was his staff person that he was assigned to it. And so the deal was that uh, they would uh, uh, the VA would provide the stones, but the family or whoever had to install the stones. So there had to be a pouring of a concrete slab and so forth and in installation of the stone. <clears throat> so I set up a program for raising funds from the lodges and we did, uh, uh, we called them, um, uh, what we call that? Did you have like a dinner or something? We had, we had dinners in, in, uh, uh, for lodge members from both the Black Lodge and the White Lodge together. And uh, it's a ceremony. So it would come out of France. The ceremony, and it, it is a real fun thing. Brian was one of our cooks for that. The, the cook I remember that. Two times, did a marvelous job. Uh, and and we raised we raised the money, and uh, they quoted me as saying, you know that that uh, after these people had uh, had uh, protected the city of Cincinnati and so forth, and that served well that uh, when they uh, died they deserved to have uh, the honor of a of a uh, tombstone right and i just said it ain't right so they quoted me saying it ain't right <laughs> so did you only get to do five of the seven graves then we had five that we identified, and we got three that we were able to actually get in touch with the next and kin. So we had three stones that we could actually lay, and we got three laid. And the the man that owned the um, uh, that owned the um, memorial company told us that he would take care of the other two. Oh, and, and he would he would see to it that those were installed. So so we paid the money, and three of those were authorized by the VA, <laughs> and two of them were not. But we're going to be marked. Last a few years ago, Charlene and I went down there for something, and I said I want to go out and visit the graves. Well, they had not been taken care of. And oh. I contacted the uh, uh, first UCC church there and uh, asked if we could get their Boy Scout troop, but they they I couldn't get anybody to grab hold of it. So uh, just last week, when all this was coming to my mind, uh, I contacted uh, um, uh, Ernie Brown there in uh, Cincinnati, who is a retired disc jockey and did. Uh, uh, like country western type music and a very very popular and he also is a mason a very strong mason and now he's retired not doing so much of his disc jockey work 
he spent a lot of time on on that. So I sent him a, a, a textbook message and asked him if I sent him material, he'd be willing to take us this on as a project and see to it that the lodge got back together to take care of it. And he told me he would. Oh, so great. I'm putting together a care package to send to Ernie. And Good. his picture is in these pictures. They're marvelous. They're, they're, this thing is wonderful. And then and then the another thing that happened was the uh, the Grand Lodge, the, the, the White Lodge, the Grand Lodge of Ohio put together this huge big book of a hundred thousand uh, members of the lodge, and that was back in uh, uh, 2015. And so they've got a they've got a thing for me in which they quote this plaque. And <laughs> I'll see if you can see that. Oh, cool! Can you see that? Yeah, I can't read it, but I can. I can see your picture. Anyhow, That's cool. I'll read it to you. Okay. It says, uh, Reverend Dr. Mendel E. Adams, Chaplain Lodge of the Hanselman uh, 208 of Lynnhurst, Ohio. After coordinating a project to place headstones on the graves of African-American Civil War veterans, in Cincinnati Wesleyan Cemetery, chaplain of the Table Lodge of First District Masons, Grand Lodge and Prince Hall, he received the following citation. In recognition of Brother Reverend Mendel Adams for his tireless effort, unfailing loyalty, devotion and leadership on behalf of the First Masonic District, Grand Lodge of Ohio in the First Masonic District, worshipful, Prince Hall Lodge of Ohio and the sincere affection he has shown his fellow brethren in our country's fallen Civil War heroes, September 28th, 2013. That's that I consider that to be a great honor. That is cool. That is an honor. That, that is be, cool. That will be that is that is a book, and I damn near knocked the bookcase down pulling that out. <laughs> Like, don't do that. Don't do that. Well, so, so were there only seven African American soldiers buried there? Those, those were only seven that we knew of that were buried. Okay. There. Uh, there might be more. Uh, there were several. There were several graves there, but these were the ones that that because of what President Lincoln had said, that that there was this edict that came down that said everyone would do it. Well, that's a marvelous story. Here are these people that couldn't even vote, mm -hmm. that, that had, you know, basically had little or no uh, uh, rights mm -hmm. under the Jim Crow kind of a situation that was going on. And yet they were uh, volunteers in the Union Army and they went over into the Kentucky side of the river and dug of uh, trenches that dug battlements over there so yeah. that when the uh, Confederate army came up there, they actually saw this embattlement and they turned and left. They decided not, not oh, to march wow. Cincinnati after all. So Cincinnati was spared having the Union soldiers come in and attack them. And these were the folks, and they went there and did the Confederate this, soldiers. And then, and then they went back to man the barricades. Wow. Their story. And these were people, one of the fellows that was there, I've got their names listed, but one of the fellows that was there, we found his great great grandpa was uh, played in the uh, tonight. Uh, tonight show band under Doc Severinsen. And oh. we were able to locate, I talked to his mother who lived down in New Orleans. I talked to her and I, and I told her what we were doing and she said, oh, uh, I can't really come. We offered to bring her up and she said, I can't really come. 
but she said we would just be so honored if for you to do that. So she signed off and gave me her uh, approval. And we had three that signed off and gave me their approval. One that showed up, actually we had one that was a grand great niece or something like that that showed up was there that day. <laughs> Amazing thing. And what it did, it helped, it helped, it's a it's a horrible legacy that 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 we have, but even within the Masonic Lodge, that we have this where the the black Masons were forced in order to be able to do their thing to start an entirely different lodge back in the uh, uh, you know Prince Hall uh, fault in the American Revolution. And, wow. And yet, when they did this, they had to they had to have their lodge separate, and it was one of the first times. And we we had been meeting together, uh, for I think about five years before that. Once a year, we met together for what we called Brotherhood Night, and uh, and uh, I was uh, one of the chaplains. We had a chap. I was a chaplain from the white side of the lodge, and then. Um, uh, Milton Blake was the chaplain from the Black Side of the Lodge, and we just said we're going to do it. We're just yep. Gonna... <laughs> well, you know it... that I rem I think I went to some dinner with you because that would have been you know after Mom and you and Mom had moved up to Cleveland. I remember going to some fancy dinner at the lodge. Would that have been? Around yes. that time, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, and Jake came, cool. Jake came over, and it's yes, nice. Jake came over, yeah, because he and I had to sit up in the gallery, especially yes. me. I had, I couldn't be, yeah, yes. that was really cool. That was cool. Well, that's what that was about, and then it was based after that. I found out the stuff, and I, I read, uh, I read uh, Levi Coffin's book. And I just said, oh, my God, this is extraordinary. We got I tried to read his book and on my Kindle, and it was just, it's it was, to read. oh, boy, it was hard to read. They did not do a good job of uh, editing. Yeah. And uh, it, it, the language wasn't right and so forth. I understand that they have an edited version of that now that is available through uh, Amazon. Oh, okay. But I still got it on my Kindle. Maybe I'll, maybe they got a, an audio version that I can listen to it on Audible. <laughs> he was a he was an extraordinary man, great man of God. Yep, yep. So anyhow, well, that's that, cool. That is cool. That's a great legacy to have, Dad. It is. It is. is. And I'm I'm. I know Brian is really proud of his involvement in it too, because he talks about it too. Brian, Brian was stalwart. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and we had to be <laughs> right. It sounds like it. You know, it was. People were like, "Oh, you don't need to." You know, it would it would have been easy for people to say, "Oh, well, we just can't do that," but. Uh, so yeah, long you, ago, for crying out loud. Who right, cares? who cares? <laughs> and I remember when you, you were talking about the genealogist, uh, and I think there was a woman who was especially helpful. I remember you talking about how amazed you were that they were able to find these people and find relatives. and Oh, they did. A, that's they did a, that's a, amazing. Uh, that is amazing. And then we presented... And then when when I presented that to the city council, I had her to come in and talk to the city council. <laughs> and so they said, well, okay, this is what, this is yeah, what we found. That's said, probably, oh, my God, we got to do something. Exactly. And that's probably one of those moments in her life where she was like, you know, she could show the government, you know, that her job was important and it was, yes. you know, that, that you know, the, the ripple effects of that are just wonderful. So and we were able to, you know, they were able to do something, make make a, a substantive, substantial movement toward justice. Yeah. Elected, but for sure, they were able to do it. And I came in and said, okay, and the cost of this thing is going to be un underscored by the 
the uh, Veterans Administration will buy the stones and the Masonic Lodge is going to pay for installing them. <laughs> so it didn't cost them anything. Exactly. And then the memorial guy, you know, the one that you actually contracted, he was so impressed. He paid yeah. for the other ones, too. That's amazing. Good job, Dad. Good job. But they need to follow up. And so I'm I'm kind of leaning yeah. on uh, uh, Ernie to get him to. Uh, well, it's been, you know, because it's been 10 years now. So they need to do some follow up and keep it, keep it up. You know, that would be a good Boy yeah. Scout or Girl Scout project. And it's a great story to pass on. So it is a great the story. The story is extraordinary. It and is. You have the story about the uh, the the twenty three <laughs> false graves and, and, and how they how they tricked the the uh, how they <laughs> tricked the government in order to get that. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, good job, Dad. Good job. So anyhow, I'm I'm proud of that, and I want that to be chiseled on my tombstone, which I don't have. <laughs> chiseled it on your, but put a sticker on your pickle jar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, now we've preserved it too on this when this muse, our your musing for today. So, all right. Well. And you got the message that I told you about the uh, uh, Ellen Mercer, right? Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you. He, he is in um, uh, he is in memory care now. Yeah. He had told us at Fossil Fuel a couple of years ago that 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 was going to be where he was going to have to be as it, things began to slip away from him. Yeah, I remember you know seeing him at the last few times we were there and he hardly even talked and it was clear yeah. that he was yeah. struggling. So. And, and uh, their daughter was there and she knew the Wernickes and she talked to Charlene more than she talked to me. <laughs> and Charlene said, she said something about the Wernickes were involved in the Methodist church. You know, yep. Said, yep. They were. Yep. They were. They were. Yep. That's where yeah, her were. husband, Peter, uh, uh, Wheeler was, you know, the Wheelers were good friends with the family, and and yeah. uh, in fact, I saw, uh, no, that was Helen Taylor. No, it was the Taylors. The Taylors. I saw Helen Taylor at Aline's birthday party. Yeah, yeah, that was so funny when we met the Mercers that first Sunday at Plymouth. <laughs> I told her I thanked her for. Uh, being such a welcoming presence to to my daughter, and I said, and that's why I'm here too. That's right. That's right. Exactly. You're not getting rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All <laughs> right. All right, Papa. Well, thank you. I um. It's good I'll to see you. Sure. We'll have to uh, figure out something. Maybe we could talk about like Thanksgiving traditions or something next week. Okay. All right. Take care. Okay. Love you. Love you. I love you too. Uh, Bye. <laughs> wish for the best for Ron. Thank you. He's doing much better. He's feeling much better. All right. Later. Bye-bye.